As game premises go, it's really hard to beat Hood, Outlaws, and Legends. A Robin Hood fantasy heist game where you and a crew of outlaws steal from the heavily guarded fortresses of the rich and give it to the poor? Sign me and all my friends the heck up. But while this breathtaking world of assassins and knights delivers some awesome moments, it also seems designed to reward bullheaded brute force attacks over cunning stealth. Even more disappointing is that it doesn't have nearly enough content to sustain the interest of the greedy swindlers it aims to please. The main idea is that you and three fellow burglars work to steal loot from the grossly incompetent powers that be in a three-stage process. First, you steal a key to a vault, then you break into said vault, and finally, make off with the goods. Given that the AI-controlled defenders are a bunch of dunces, it should be easy. Except that a rival gang of four is trying to nab the loot first. So, Hood is all about stealth and cooperation, until that inevitably fails and everybody murders each other until one team makes off with the treasure. Each of the four character classes has a distinct role that can prove invaluable under the right circumstances. Robin the Ranger can silently kill enemies from afar and open up new paths on the map with rope arrows that others can climb. On the opposite end of the spectrum is John the Brawler, a melee tank who can use his beefy lumberjack arms to open gates for his allies and is able to carry the treasure chest faster than any other class. They all have their own consumables too, like blinding flashbangs or deadly gas grenades, as well as special abilities that can be used once every few minutes. Stealth-focused Marianne the Hunter has the ability to go invisible for a few seconds, while support-focused Took the Mystic can heal his allies and mark nearby enemies. Each class feels distinct and unique, although the balance feels a little iffy depending on what phase of a match you're in. Marianne is undoubtedly the best stealth class and is great in the first two phases, but gets trounced in the escape when open combat becomes unavoidable. This leads me to one of the main issues with Hood. Stealth isn't rewarding enough, and going loud isn't punished enough. Almost inevitably, as soon as the enemy teams meet one another, subterfuge gives way to an all-out street brawl. And no matter how long you avoid it, almost every match I've played has ended in a drawn-out extraction sequence where opposing teams fight for control of a winch they must crank to make off with the loot. This can drag on for more than 10 minutes of stalemated combat. Compare that to stealing the key and breaking into the vault, which can take only a few minutes and can feasibly be accomplished within stealth, it's a bit lopsided. Don't get me wrong, wild, reckless combat can be a lot of fun, but it also shatters part of the Robin Hood fantasy by trivializing stealth. It can't all be swashbuckling swordplay. In one instance, my friends and I decided to throw caution to the wind and run with a full group of Johns. Forget stealth. We openly attacked every enemy in sight and were able to steal the key, break into the vault, and make off with the treasure before the opposing team even knew what hit them. When it came to the combat-heavy escape phase, our John squad easily overwhelmed our naively balanced opponents, who paid the ultimate price for the fatal sin of playing as intended. That just felt wrong. I mean, pretty fun, but in a broken sort of way. <laughs> what makes the combat dominant meta all the more frustrating is that the actual stealth mechanics in Hood are really well done and very satisfying. Sneaking around and working together to take out a trio of guards all at the same time makes me feel like a complete badass. And stealing the key right out from under the guards' noses with a well-placed smoke bomb is enormously fulfilling. The assassination animations and accompanying sound effects are a stealth lover's ASMR. Back to mother Which made me want to avoid the more expedient direct assault style that Hood encourages. Each of the five maps are unique and beautifully designed, from a vast and murky swamp to a bleak, claustrophobic graveyard. 
Learning the areas and tracking down the randomly generated key and vault locations at the beginning of each match is a thrill, especially as your eyes dart back and forth in search of the rival gang that you know can't be far off. Marking enemies and coordinating a plan of attack over game chat and working together as a unit is an absolute blast the first few times you pull it off. And when all hell breaks loose when your team is caught by guards or ambushed by rival players, the slow, methodical pace gives way to utter carnage as you scramble to smash a hammer over someone's head before they can put an arrow through you. But again, there's a catch, and it's a big one. After just a few hours, you'll have familiarized yourself with the small pool of maps and playable characters. Once you've done that, there just isn't much else to do aside from repeating the same heists over and over again. And I started wanting to play something else just for the variety within the first couple of days. Hood Outlaws and Legends is a stealth action game with an interesting PvPvE premise, and that leads to some exciting moments of chaos when your well-planned heist goes awry upon contact with the enemy. Its downfall is that its balance rewards hacking and slashing over stealth and planning, especially in the pivotal third act. Even if you embrace that, there just aren't enough maps to sustain the single mode for more than a handful of hours before things become repetitive. For more co-op action, check out our review of Outriders in It Takes Two. And for everything else, stick with IGN. Mm -hmm.